All right, in this tutorial, we're gonna go over how to trace um, images and turn them into vector objects in Inkscape. So first thing is you just find a file you want. You can sometimes copy it from online or save it. I happen to have a couple right here and just click on it and drag it right into Inkscape. So I'll drag it in, it's gonna, whatever it says, just kind of accept it. And I have some red socks there. So I'm gonna kind of make these a little bigger for a second just so we can see it better. So I have an image and if you notice what's bad about this is if I zoom in, so this is a bitmap where it's just like kind of like a paint by numbers where there, if you think about the screen's really made up of a grid of a bunch of colors and the way this works is that this file tells the screen what color to color in each little box and that's your image. But I want if I want to make this kind of cleaner, I want to make it into a vector thing, it'll be a lot more cleaner. I can resize it and I won't get all the blurriness. So that's really easy to do in Inkscape. I'm just going to select my image that I dropped in there. I'm going to go to Path trace bitmap and now there's a few options so the default is that it basically traces things black and white and what it does is it looks at the colors in there it says it's i'm going to call this black or i'm going to call it white and if it's a certain darkness it makes it black if it's a certain lightness it makes it white so i'm going to click live preview and take a look at what this is going to be so it pretty much found it and turned it all black now where this thing says threshold right here if i move this around i mean i only have one color here but if there were multiple colors, if I move this around, it would actually make different colors turn into black and other colors white because I'd be reaching a different um, grayscale threshold. So if you want to just kind of make one for this thing, this is one shape, I can actually change the color later on. For single color objects like this, this is usually the best way to go is click on, uh, just keep it the, the default where it says brightness cut off, mess with the threshold until you get the color you want. Like if these were like really light colored or like yellow or something like that, they might not have been picked up yet. And then hit OK. And if you notice here now, let's close this, I have two objects. I have the original red socks and I have the, this kind of black version, which I can change. And now if I zoom in, you can kind of see that the red ones are blurry, the black ones are not. So I have my shape and I'm gonna get rid of my original now. And what's nice is I can now take this shape, this is a shape. So I can go down here, I can change the fill of it. If I wanna give it an outline, I can give it an outline. I can change the size of the outline. I can go back and modify things. I can click on this. And these are all points and I can drag them around. So I, so the program just basically took that, sh that image shape that I had and turned it into a vector shape that I can now modify. So that's a single color object. And if you actually, let me show you one more thing. If you notice though too, let's turn off the stroke, that this didn't kind of do it perfectly. Like these are kind of curved a little bit and that's because my original image was really blurry. So if you are gonna trace things, it's good to get a really high quality image or as big an image as you can, so it'll, it'll actually trace a lot better. If it's really blurry, it's going to try to guess what it is going to be, and you're going to get these curves a lot of times as opposed to perfectly straight lines. But in this case, this is fine. Um, let's see if we, if we have a multicolor image. So I'm going to drag this logo in here. So I have a nice Patriots logo. And this one has blue, it has red, and it has some gray down here too. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to Path, Trace, Bitmap again. And if you notice, if I mess with this, threshold this time see how I can get some so right now it's at the thing where blue is dark enough to be called black but the the kind of tips of the hat the red part is not dark enough so they're off but if I increase the threshold all of a sudden that I get to the spot where that color red is actually dark enough now to be called black and also the gray here is not dark enough so the gray here stays out but if I get really high the gray starts to go in as well so if you want to do a single color thing just like before, I would pick a threshold around whatever it was, like four and a half or something. And that will pretty much turn all the colors into, except for the gray, into black and everything else stays white. But maybe you want to keep the colors or you want to keep the different scales of gray. So if, instead of doing a single pass, which just only gives you one color, if I come down to a multiple pass, let's say I do colors, for example, I can then say I want to, to, do, a, to do a trace in a certain number of colors. So let's drop this down to, I don't know, let's say four and see what it looks like. And also I'm gonna put remove background because I don't want, it'll, otherwise it'll give me a white background. So if I hit okay, looks like it didn't do anything, but really now there's two images on top of each other. Oops, did I not hit remove background by mistake? Let's try that again. And now I have a shape. This one doesn't have a background. You notice there's two things. If I zoom in again, the original one's blurry. The new one is not. And what I can do now is the new one is made up of a bunch of different shapes. So this is the thing that's kind of weird. 
right now they're grouped together. If I right click and hit ungroup, there's actually a blue shape, a red shape, and a gray shape all stacked on top of each other. And that's how it made that image. So let me go back. So I can actually edit all those. So if I wanted to, for example, change the blue, I could click on the blue one. And let's see, make the blue one. Let's make it that color and click on the gray. Make it that color, click on the red ones. So I can actually change all those different shapes individually. But if you notice now I have, I have nice clean shapes uh, based on my original image, except that they're all there by themselves. So sometimes that's useful, sometimes it's not. Like in this case, maybe you wanna, you don't need the pink stuff because you wanna just be clear. So I can delete that one, put this back to blue, put this back to red, and I have a nice Pats logo. It's a really, really clean. But I could, and again, what's nice about this is if I make it really big, oops, just like both of those, make it really big, it's still nice and clean because it's, I made it a vector graphic and it's based on a mathematical equation, not based on a bitmap where I'm calling in like a paint by numbers thing. And again, if you're tracing more complex things, it's just a little bit of when you're up here in the trace bitmap thing, playing with the options, getting different things. Again, now I trace this in colors. If I want to trace it, I can click grays and I want to trace it in grayscale. And you can kind of play with these things and get different tra get different traces. And it's pretty good. If it's a really complex image, it's not going to have a, it's going to have trouble tracing it. But if it's something fairly simple, it can trace it pretty easily.